Welcome, everybody. Today's video is going to be called uh, Rabbi Tovisingh's his teachings on Isaiah 53, demolished by God's grace by Rabbi Elijah Michaels. Uh, and I've done this video because it, this actually was my very first video that I did, uh, but I, I dealt with just three specific points, uh, which if they were listened to, you'd see um, Isaiah 53 could only reference the Mashiach and not Israel. But a lot of comments that have come from, especially <coughs> my Jewish brothers, um, commenting um, on Rabbi Tov, singers' comments on teachings on Isaiah 53, which are namely this. Let's just do a, a quick summary. Rabbi Tov Singer says that Isaiah 53 couldn't possibly even be the Mashiach because the suffering servant it could only be Israel because in, in, in a few places in Isaiah, before Isaiah 53, Isaiah talks about the servant being Israel. Okay, so that in context of these verses could mean that the, the servant in, in Isaiah 53 could only possibly be um, Israel and not the Mashiach. And of course, that's a lot of um, objections that I receive uh, and comments I receive actually referencing that teaching um, of Rabbi Thomas. So let's just deal with that topic first before we go into Isaiah 53. Rabbi Singer says that Isaiah talks about the South Israel before Isaiah 53, which of course he does. But let's look at the context, okay? Remember, Isaiah 53 is about the suffering servant, not the servant, okay? So when Isaiah is talking about the servant Israel, you have four particular times that Rabbi Songa mentions. I've titled them CFNR. When God first talks about Israel being the servant, it's because Israel was cast off. So God's assuring Israel that he's not going to cast them off anymore. F, forgotten. He's consoling Israel because they'll think they're forgotten because of the harsh discipline God has um, bestowed upon Israel, which if you read Isaiah 1, you see it's terrible. But God is consoling them that I have not forgotten you. C-F-A-N, um, um, meaning that the name, that I know your name. God now comforts Israel that I that they, God knows their name. And R, ah, mean redeemed. So another topic that God now is consoling the servant Israel that he will, I will redeem you. So CFNR, those four seven songs, is just God comforting Israel and assuring them that he's not forsaken them. When it comes to the servant Mashiach, it is very different. Now we see this in Isaiah 42, when Isaiah is talking about, now this Scripture references is taken from the Hebrew, not the King James Version, okay? Which Isaiah 42 and the Tanakh, it, it is written down there that this chapter is about the Mashiach. So when it talks about the servant Mashiach in Isaiah 52, God says, Behold my servant. And it is titled by the rabbis, this is referencing the Mashiach. So you see the difference. You've got Israel the servant, CFNR. God consoling them that he's not going to cast them off and he's going to redeem them, though they've been disciplined. But Isaiah 42 verse 1, it's not talking about that servant, it's talking about another servant, which of course is the Mashiach, which, is, which has not been CFNR, it's not been cast off, forgotten, or, and, and does not need to be redeemed. In fact, it's the very opposite. And if you go down in Isaiah 42, 19 and 20, then it makes reference to the other servant, Israel, the one that is disobedient and blind and deaf, very different than the servant um, in Isaiah 42, 1. So you see, brothers and sisters, there's two servants, very clearly defined, and you'll find it again in Isaiah 49, 6, where we see that the one servant, Israel, has come to turn Jacob, Israel, back to God. So again, we see very clearly two servants, one is the Mashiach, and the other is uh, Israel. And, uh, and God very clearly in the scripture helps us notice the difference between the Mashiach, the servant, uh, um, uh, and the Israel, the servant. He uses the word, behold. Isaiah 42, verse 1, turn in your Bibles, your Hebrew Bibles, and you'll see, behold my 
servant. Amen. Not one who's been cast off or forgotten or needs to be redeemed. One now who's coming to do the redeeming. Praise be to God. Amen. Which is why it uses the word behold. And again, does this in Malachi chapter 3 when talking about the coming of the Messiah. Behold. Amen. The one that you seek for shall suddenly come to his temple. Again, referencing the Messiah. So God helps us to know the difference between Israel, the servant, and the Mashiach, the servant, uh, a praise be to God, by putting the word behold there. So you see very clearly, we see from those scriptures uh, that indeed, uh, and the Mashiach, <coughs> praise be to God, is uh, the suffering servant uh, that Isaiah, especially in Isaiah 52 verse 13, says, behold my servant, that word behold again, meaning he's introducing uh, the Messiah. So that's that cleared up. Those who bring objections that that it seems to be only one servant and it's Israel when actually it is not. And you've got to know the difference between the two. And Isaiah 53 very much is dealing with Mashiach, uh, Amen, the suffering servant. Uh, now, the Talmud itself. Uh, um, if you um, look in the Talmud uh, um, and Ibid Ibid two, the Talmud. It references Rabbi Ashlik, um, says that we all of the rabbis concur, but Isaiah 53 is referencing the Mashiach ben David. Okay, Moshe Kuspin, famous rabbi, said that Isaiah 53 is also about the Mashiach. Rambam also states in Ibn 2 that the Mashiach is uh, a suffering servant in Isaiah 53. And uh, one of the most famous rabbis, uh, Rabbi Schneerson, um, of the 20th century, uh, praise God, of the uh, um, Labutra sect, uh, he uh, said this uh, in his book, Exile to Redemption, Volume 2. He said that Elijah appeared to Rabbi Joshua ben Levi, and Joshua ben Levi asked uh, Elijah, when is the Mashiach coming? And Elijah said this to him, you will see him sitting at the gate of Rome, stricken with Wounds are Bakushtana. Listen, please, brothers and sisters. This is the Jewish Talmud. Amen. You will see him, Elijah said, sitting at the gate of, of the gates of Rome, stricken with room wounds. And of this Rashi references Isaiah 53. Praise be God that he was wounded for our transgression. So we can see very clearly. Not only is there two servants very clearly stipulated in Isaiah, we find even the Talmud shows us uh, from very reputable rabbis, giants like Rashi and Rambam and etc. And even to that, and the Rebbe's book, Exodus Redemption, Volume 2, that the suffering servant in Isaiah 53 is none other than the Mashiach. So please, my Jewish brothers, please, uh, before making comments, referencing these two parts that I've just said, because I'm not going to revisit it, trying to get through. Okay, now, secondly, Isaiah 52, 2 verse 13, it talks about that behold my servant, he shall be highly exalted and lifted up. Uh, now, of course, uh, um, the Rabbi, Rabbi uh, Trevor Singer said this is uh, um, um, Israel. But of course, uh, nowhere in the scripture does it ever reference uh, that, uh, that neither in the Talmud, the Israel shall be highly exalted and lofty and lifted up. It never references that. In fact, if you look in the Talmud, Shemone 127, it says this, uh, that the Mashiach shall be more highly exalted than the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Moses, and even the angels themselves. Even the Talmud, sorry, the, the Talmud in Haggai 13, Rabbi Akiva, believes he sees the Mashiach sitting at the right hand of God and believes that he's divine. And therefore, a debate happens between him and Rabbi Yose. So you can see, um, and the highly exalted status could only reference the Mashiach and not Israel. Praise be to God. You also have the Zohar. In Zohar 2, 2.1.2a, when it talks about when the temple is destroyed, all the sins and the sicknesses, look at this, the sicknesses. Remember it says, amen, I, he was pained, and by his stripes are we healed. Um, the, the Zohar states in 
chapter 2, 2, 1, 2, eight, that all the sicknesses of the nations and the sins shall come upon the Mashiach. Again, fitting in directly to Isaiah 53. Amen. And uh, uh, praise be to God. And Isaiah 6, verse 1, Isaiah 2, verse 17, we have the exalted state never ever in scripture is result is, is is applied to anybody else but the Lord thy God and not Israel. Amen. So of course so uh, applying Isaiah 52 verse 13, the highly exalted lifted up is never ever could be um Israel. In fact, at the end of Ezekiel 16, verses 62 and 63, Ezekiel 36, verses 21, 25. And Zephaniah 3 verse 12, when it's talking about the end times, it very clearly says Israel will be humbled, be made to feel ashamed forever. God will restore them, but nothing what they have done, that they may be eternally ashamed of what they have done. So the end time result is not the highly exalting Israel, it's actually the humbling of Israel which you'll find in many, many Jewish sources. So again, those who are students of the Tanakh and the Torah, please, before you write comments, my Jewish brothers, uh, please become like a good, studious Jew and study. Uh, as David said, meditate on thy word day and night uh, and don't be quick to criticize without examining the evidence that is in this video. Praise be to God. So that's that dealt with. The third thing we'll deal with before we go into Isaiah 53, <clears throat> Rabbi Tobias says this, uh, that when Isaiah 53 opens and says, uh, Amen, who have believed our report? He said it's the kings of the nations speaking it, not Israel. It's the Gentile kings that are speaking it, and it is not Israel. Well, please listen to this very carefully, okay? Let's look at... Uh, uh, see if God includes Israel amongst the other nations. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 3, God said to Ezekiel, read it in your Tanakh, in your Hebrew Bible, go and tell Israel the rebellious nations. God titles and labels Israel not as a rebellious nation, but as rebellious nations. Meaning the 12 tribes are like nations. So you see, God very much including Israel amongst the rebellious nations. If you don't think that's enough, let's look at Jeremiah 25, verse 15 to 28. God now is speaking to all the nations and he said this, I am now going to judge all the nations to make them drink the cup of my wrath. Where does he begin with? Judah and Israel. They are the first. So again, we see very clearly God has no hesitation of including Israel in the nation amongst all the other nations. If that doesn't convince you, Ezekiel 5, verse 5 to 8. Now listen to this. Here's what God said. I have set her among the nations. Why? Because she is worse than all the nations. So please, Rabbi Tobias Singer, please, why would you even for a second consider that Isaiah 53, when it's now talking about the sins and the rebellious nature, it is could only be the Gentile king speaking and nations and not Israel. God very clearly, I'll say it to you again, Ezekiel 5 verse 5 to 8, I have sent her among the nations. Why? Because she is worse. So again, you see very much clearly, this introduces Israel as the one talking in Isaiah 53, 1, about its rebellious and sinful state, needing a suffering servant, which, of course, Isaiah 53, verse 6, and the Lord laid upon him the iniquity of us all. See, you really need to know these scriptures. People, um, like the rabbis, are making comments, and they're not providing with you, for you, sorry, all these scriptures as evidence for you to understand very clearly um, in the context of Isaiah 53. Now, um, it, just before we go into Isaiah 53, you have Ezekiel 16, verse 34 to 36, uh, amen, uh, where God said this to Israel, you, after you, 
there will never be a nation any worse. Oh, please, brothers and sisters. I could give you many more. I'm, I'm, going, I'm actually going to stop there because there's, there's, no, I'm not. I'll give you two more. There's so many scriptures. Amos chapter 3, when God is judging the nations, Israel is put last. Isaiah 19 verse 25, God talks about Egypt and Assyria and Israel is being one, a group of Trinity belonging to God and so forth and so on. Amen. And when you read these scriptures, how could you possibly think that Israel is not included in the nations that are confessing their sinful state? It doesn't balance with the context of scripture. That's why I said that Rabbi Tov is saying us, teachings is demolished. Praise be to God. So please listen to this video time and time again before bringing your comments. Praise be to God. Because people do it. And seem to ignore the evidence, amen, which is not a Jewish way. A Jewish way is to study things carefully before commenting. Two ears, one mouth. Listen double and then speak. But it seems to be people that are speaking without listening. Okay, now let's look at Isaiah 53 itself. Okay, let's look at three specific verses because we could be here hours dealing with the whole chapter. But we've dealt with enough so far to convince you that very much so that the suffering servant could only be the Mashiach and, uh, and Israel must be amongst the all the nations. Praise be to God. Because when it says, and the Lord laid upon him the iniquity of us all, it means as it means all nations. Praise be to God. So let's look at Isaiah 53 verse 5. It said this. In the Hebrew it said he was pained because of our rebellious sins. Now, of course, Rabbi said it could only be the Gentiles who are the rebellious sins, not Israel. Despite, and I'm not going to repeat everything I've said, which proves it's everybody, but let's just deal with the scriptures that show um, whenever God mentions the word rebellious, who's he referring to? Isaiah chapter 30, verse 8 to 11. Here's what God says. That Israel's rebellion is eternally rebellious. Meaning they're so rebellious they would never repent except for God's grace. Which is why Ezekiel 16, the end chapters which I said to you, God said this. And the end chapters of Ezekiel chapter 36. That everything I'm going to do with you, I do for my own name's sake, not for you. That you will be eternally ashamed. Why? Because it's God that has put his laws into their heart by the grace. And not anything that they have done themselves. Like Ezekiel said, that you may be eternally ashamed. And Isaiah is backing it up, calling Israel eternally rebellious. Not the Gentiles. So how from that verse could you deduce that it couldn't be Israel who's rebellious? Deuteronomy 9.24, God said, you have been rebellious since the first day I knew you. Ezekiel 2 verse 3, which we've covered, you Israel's title, God calls rebellious nations. Zephaniah 3 verse 1, verse 1, it says, Woe to Israel, the rebellious city. Ezekiel 44 verse 6, at the end of exile, you see that Israel is still rebellious. Image, of course, balances with Ezekiel 39 verse 23. At the end of time, we see all the nations. Now watch this. All the nations, according to the word of God, says this, that Israel will know that it's been punished and has suffered because of their rebellious sins. So if all the nations at the end of time are making the confession that everything Israel's gone through is because of their rebellious sins, how could Isaiah 53 verse 5, the rebellious sins, not include Israel, but just the other nations, when all the other nations, according to Ezekiel 39, 23, is stating that at the end of the time, Israel will know it's been punished and everything it went through was because of its rebellious sins. Oh, praise be to God. And, and that, that deals with that verse. So we're left with no doubt whatsoever, praise be to God, that the, that the, that the people speaking here about the rebellious sins, amen, is Israel included with the nations, uh, which of course balances that it means that the Mashiach could only be the suffering servant that does what? 
And upon him, Isaiah 53 verse 6, was laid the iniquity, the rebellious sins of us all. Oh, it saddens me. After hearing these verses, no wonder the prophet Isaiah said, You have ears, but you do not hear. You have eyes, but you do not see. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. If you were just meditating these scriptures, you would see very clearly. Amen. That the suffering servant could only be the Mashiach. Praise be to God. Because everybody here, amen, that God is addressing that is rebellious and is sinful, amen, and needs their sin to be laid upon someone else, amen, could only be Israel included, amen, amongst all the nations. Now let's look at the next verse I chose, Isaiah 55 verse 6, and when it talks about, amen, uh, for we all like sheep have gone astray. Now, Rabbi Octavia Singer says this is talking about uh, the other nations. Now, how could the nations refer themselves to sheep? God's sheep, nowhere in the whole of the scripture does God ever reference the Gentile nations as his sheep, ever. Not once. Not once, sir. It is always a term used for Israel. Israel is the one that God lost like a sheep. And he said, all we like sheep have gone astray, but the Lord laid upon him the iniquity. Look at that one again, all Jew and Gentile. But the Lord laid upon singular the Mashiach of the iniquity of us all. Amen. Now, what verses back that up? Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 6. Israel is my sheep. Ezekiel 36, verse 37. Israel is my sheep. Psalm 100, Psalm 74, verse 1. We are the sheep of his pasture. Amen. And to, to cap it all off, David in Psalm 119. The most famous and longest verse of all said this, uh, For I have gone astray like a lost sheep. So we can see here, and it could be impossible for the nations to be speaking this verse and not Israel. It has to be Israel, which of, which of course am um, referencing themselves the sheep, which now brings in the person that now is suffering and for all the lost sheep could only mean the Mashiach and it's impossible for it to be Israel because they are the sheep that has gone astray which King David says very clearly in, in the last verse of Psalm 119 now of course all these scriptures are ignored in fact all the scriptures I've given are ignored amen when people make comments uh, and let's look at the last comment um, Isaiah 53 verse 11 it talks about with his knowledge the Mashiach um, it doesn't say the word Mashiach, it just says, with his knowledge, he will justify many. So, again, the Rabbi Torah saying, I said, this is referencing, it is Israel, the suffering servant. Nowhere in uh, the Tanakh of the Bible does God references the, 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 the knowledge of Israel, so justify many. In fact, if you turn in your Bibles uh, to um, Isaiah 11, verse 2, and listen, listen here what it says. Remember, it's talking about the rod of Jesse, the staff of Jesse. And everybody knows, all the rabbis know, um, Isaiah 11 verse 2 is talking about the Mashiach. Amen. Here's what it says about him. But he, the spirit will rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Mean rest, that means not leave him. Praise be to God. And of course, with that same wisdom, Isaiah 42 verse 6, uh, he shall, God said, I shall make you a covenant uh, to the nation. You shall be a light to the nation. So you see from Isaiah 42 and Isaiah 11 verse 2, amen, the Mashiach is the one that has the spirit of wisdom resting upon him, which becomes a light for the nations to see. Uh, amen. So, amen. Does that not fit in with Isaiah 53 verse 11, that with um, his knowledge, uh, my servant shall justify many, fits perfectly into the Mashiach and with nobody else at all. And all of these verses are completely ignored, uh, amen, by Rabbi Tobias Singer, presenting his case that the suffering servant, Isaiah 53, 
could only be Israel. I'm not going to repeat it or summarize it. Please, uh, amen, just go back to the beginning of the video and listen to it again. And you'll see very clearly, as I said, that the teaching of Rabbi Tommy and Singer, all of it, has been demolished by the grace of God. Amen. Through His Holy Spirit by Rabbi Elijah Michaels. God bless.